What's going on guys? Back at the range today with a couple things to talk about. So let's jump right into it. We're looking at a Henry and an Optic. All right, so here it is. The color case hardened Henry 3030. I don't know what it is about these, but they seem to always be hard to come by. Uh, and very sought after. I don't know if it's a manufacturing thing, they don't make them a lot, but man, they are gorgeous. This thing just looks nice. I put the large loop on, I took off the small loop, put the large loop on for a glove hand, and I think it just sets it off and gives it that really nice look. But then also, we're talking about this LPVO scope I got on top by Athlon. So let's do it. All right, so I came across Athlon online and they, it seemed, when I started looking at their website, it seemed like they had some pretty quality stuff. Now, you know, any, any manufacturer can say, oh, they've, they've got the best stuff or good glass or good quality, whatever it is. But I was like, you know what? Let's try these guys out because I hadn't heard of them. And I like to try out new stuff and see just where the quality is and, and break away from those really big brands that everybody knows that are really super expensive and just try something out and just see you know what the quality is and what it's like so i was like you know what i want to strap it on a lever gun because i think that would be cool to have an lpvo on a lever gun especially talking 30 30 i'm not a big hunter but you know you're not going to go out to know 400 yards with a 30 30. to me in my mind and i could be wrong so you can correct me in the comments but this is like less than 200 yards i mean 200 and in you know take a shot with a 30 30 and i figure with the lpvo this is a one to six That'd be pretty, I think, good for those kind of distances. So let's take some shots here. I'll just start her off uh, close, 25 yards or so, and then break it down to 100. That's at this range. Take some shots and just see what it's like, see what the glass is like, see how clear it is, and just kind of go from there. And... All right, so here are some of the specs, and here's the packaging. I think it's a pretty standard box you see in the industry. Uh, but it's the Midas BTR Gen 2 HD second focal plane scope. The glass is pretty clear, and I'll try to get some shots of what I'm seeing through it. I mean, it's never really going to do it justice on camera, um, but so far, it's been nice and clear. Now, this is the reticle that I've chosen. It is illuminated. Uh, it's got hash marks up and down, a circle, and a dot in the middle. And there's some of the other specs. 1 to 6, 24 mil, tube size is 30 mil, eye relief, and all of those little specs there, if you wanted to know. Inside the box, pretty standard, uh, nothing crazy there. Came with a cloth. I did get the optional cantilever scope mount that you see on the gun that does not come with it. So if you, you know, you don't have one, you can get it um, or to get your own, whatever you want to do. Uh, the one thing I noticed it did not come with in the box is an uh, extended throw lever or a throw lever of any kind. It does have the option to put one on, but does not come with one in the box. Uh, not a huge deal, but would have been nice just to kind of give you that complete package. But enough talking about it, let's take some shots and just see how it performed. Let's take a second to thank a friend of the channel, Manadnock Firearms. Please check those guys out. Link to their Instagram will be below and let them know that Steve MP5 sent you. They'll give you a little treat. You know what's crazy? I have not sighted this in, but at 50, I'm looking pretty, pretty on. Move it down to 75. Still at one power here. Should be empty. First shots out of this thing. Now this is first shots for me out of the Henry in general. So that's nice. Uh, smooth Henry action, just like you'd expect of a Henry. You know, nice build quality. Can't say enough about a Henry. You know, I, got, I love a Henry. All right, what I'm shooting today is some Remington Core Lock, 170 grain. This is moving at 2,200 feet per second at the muzzle at 100 yards, 1895. Probably a little overkill for just target shooting. However, it's what I got. So let's run it some more. Five power. See what it's like looking down there at 100. Eye relief's not bad. Gotta come in about here to be clear. A 
it's pretty clear. Now, I'm not a I'm not a big scope guy. Where I, I mean, I don't have any really high-end scopes to be able to say, hey, this is just as good as a Night Force, or this is just as good as Leopold. I'm sure it's not because there's a lot of small details that go into play with the quality of glass used, like the outside ring uh, or edge of the glass when you're looking not being distorted or anything like that. But just looking here, one times, there, there's really, I really don't see anything around the edges. Maybe the tiniest little bit of distortion around the edges, but it seems pretty good. Let's turn the illuminator on, take a couple more shots. I see three more shots here. What I'm also going to do is, again, I'm going to throw in shots best I can, looking down the scope uh, to give you an idea what it looks like. But it's it's pretty solid so far, guys. And to not be paying as much as something on the what do you say, like the high end scale. I mean, they make scopes that are more expensive than this guy. I can't remember the price. I'll have to put it on the screen. It's pretty good. All right, vertical on, looking down at 100. It looks good. I almost actually prefer the reticle off. I mean, in, in different lighting situations, you know, you can you can take your pick but in this lighting situation early morning had it on about halfway bright it was looking down at 100 i don't want to say it was distracting for me but it definitely just wasn't needed like i didn't need to have the illuminator on uh, but it's nice that it has it to be used in the situations where you need it henry never disappoints glad i finally have a 3030 in the the lever gun collection because now I pretty much have all the calibers that I would want to have in a lever gun, 4570, 3030, and then of course the like 357. Don't need a 44 mag lever gun at this point. It would be nice to round that collection off at some point, but I'm not like a big 44 mag guy. I have a couple revolvers, but don't necessarily need it in a lever gun. I love a Henry. The quality of these bills is just is just I think second to none. Uh, the finish on this, let me try to give you a close up of the case color, but man. That thing is just nice. Looks really, really good. Uh, I love the, the, the dark brown with the color case hardened and then matching it up with the dark brown sling. This is a really nice package. I don't know if I'm gonna leave this on the Henry. I mean, I don't see why I couldn't. I mean, I think it fits on there. Little LPVO action on a lever gun. I think it looks pretty cool. Let's do this. For somebody who doesn't know and somebody who's not a hunter or somebody who doesn't have 3030 or 4570, you've probably heard a lot about 4570 over the past handful of years as lever guns has be have become really popular in the mainstream, people tricking them out and all that stuff. 4570 packs a punch. Uh, 3030, not, not as much, uh, but also 4570 is more expensive than the 3030. So depending on your budget and how much you want to shoot and what you're hunting and those sorts of things, they're similar. Uh, but 3030 is cheaper. You're going to get more range out of a 3030 than a 4570. Uh, but the 4570 is is packing more of a wallop. So uh, let's take a shot with my 4570 and just show you what that's like in comparison uh, to this. We'll do it back to back. All right, so here's what you're looking at: 4570 versus 3030. 4570 is just a monster of a round uh, in comparison to a 3030. You can see the differences there. The grain weight uh, of the bullet is going to be much heavier on the 4570 than on the 3030. Uh, but again, this is again what you're paying for. This is less expensive in the 3030, whereas the 4570 is more expensive. But again, it's, it's kind of like different applications. But at the same time, it's pick your poison, whatever you want to shoot. Uh, both of these are just a normal sort of copper jacket with a lead tip. And this, I believe, the 4570 is a think it's trapdoor safe so it's not as a, it's not a full load like a solid uh, brass projectile that I have here you'll see on the gun that's gonna be like you want to take something down uh, this is gonna be good in uh, any any sort of action uh, whether it's built for uh, high pressures or not it's trapdoor safe that's what that means and 30 30 so let's do it back to back we'll do 30 30 first and then 45 70 45 70 just has a little more pop 
uh, than the 3030, but again, heavier bullet. And I, that box of ammo doesn't have the specs on it, so I don't know what kind of feet per second it's running or the grain weight of that. More punch out of the 4570, a little less yardage. Inside that 4570 box, I had some of these as well. Again, I don't know the specs on it, but this looks like just a solid lead uh, bullet there. Don't know if this is less punchy or more punchy, but we'll take, take a peek here and see. More punchy, more punchy than the last one. Uh, but yeah, so there's a difference between 4570 and 3030. Besides the Remington loads that I have, I'm also running some uh, Stenel stuff, and this is some 150 grain moving at 2,000 feet per second from a 20 inch barrel at the muzzle. This is a, as you can see there, a solid copper hollow point, pretty cool round. So this is gonna really do some expanding and, and damage to whatever you're hunting. Uh, I like Stinell, they do a lot of, a lot of nice stuff. They do a lot of niche round loading, uh, a lot of uncommon stuff. So if you've got, or, or are into a lot of uncommon calibers, some older stuff, They're, these guys are out of Ohio, really quality top-notch ammo, and you're more than likely probably be able to find what you're looking for if you can't find it anywhere else. Real quick, I'm gonna do a back-to-back -back of the Remington core lock and then the Stenell stuff. So very similar in uh, feet per second and grain weight. The core lock is a little bit more at 22 versus the 2000 here and 170 grain on the core lock, 150 grain on the uh, Stenell. So let's just see, it should be probably just about the same. Yeah, so yeah, it's just about the same. All right, guys, I got five more rounds loaded up in this bad boy. Uh, final thoughts, uh, well, one on the Henry. It's my first time out with the 3030, first time owning and shooting a 3030. Uh, exactly how I expect it to be, quality piece, great experience with a Henry. It's no different than my any other time I've, I've shot at Henry or owned a Henry. So if you're thinking about it, definitely uh, check them out. And then Athlon Optics, Pleasantly surprised with the scope coming in at the price it does. I feel like for the quality of the glass that you're getting, the features you're getting, the reticle choices that they have you can choose from, illuminated optics if you want to use it. As of right now, first shots through it, first impressions, seeing it out in the wild, downrange, looking at uh, different backstops at different distances from 25 down to 100. Looks good, looks good on six power. I don't think uh, you would feel bad about giving them a try because Seems like it's pretty quality. All right, here we go, going down at 100. Let's bump her up to, where are we at there? It's about four. All right, guys, don't forget Steve, MP5, on the Instagrams. See you next time.